This chapter will provide you with a general overview of the forces involved during manoeuvring and sailing of ships. Increased velocity gives decreased pressure. Water is a liquid. It flows and it is nearly incompressible. When water has to pass through a smaller space, its velocity will increase. The increased velocity will decrease the pressure. An example of this is squat. When the water has to pass between the hull and the seabed, its velocity will increase. This increase will result in a decreased pressure, which will make the vessel sink deeper in the water. Accepting that ship handling can be defined as using forces under control to manage forces not under control, these forces can be divided into the following three categories. Forces under direct control. Forces under indirect control. Forces not under control. Click the pictures to learn more about these forces. These forces should be under direct control during ship handling. Ship's main engine. Ship's propeller. Ship's thruster. Ship's rudder. Ship's anchor. Ship's moorings. Professional ship handlers should familiarize themselves with the performance and limitations of various ship systems used during maneuvering. The most important forces said to be under indirect control are the ship's inertia, other hydrodynamic factors such as bank effects, squat, interaction, etc. The ship inertia varies with different loading conditions, but the loading conditions can normally not be changed during a maneuver. To a certain extent, changing the speed of the vessel can control the hydrodynamic moment of inertia. Other hydrodynamic factors, such as squat, bank effects, etc., can to a certain extent be avoided or minimized if they are known and understood. In practice, it is not possible to calculate the influence from all these forces continuously. In real life, these forces must be estimated based on experience and up-to-date information. There is no substitute for experience in ship handling. The most important forces not under control are tide, wind, waves, current, fouling. Although we cannot control these forces, we can, through close observation and by using available information sources, obtain relevant information, which can be used to minimize the effect of these forces. The pivot point is the point that the ship turns around. Click this text to continue. When the ship is dead in the water, the pivot point is generally in the center of the ship. When initially ordering engines ahead, the pivot point shifts forward as the speed increases. Once the ship is steady state steaming, the pivot point settles back at about one third from the bow. When ordering engines astern, the opposite takes place. The pivot point shifts aft and settles at about one third from the stern. The distance from the pivot point to the applied force gives you the turning lever. A long lever gives you more turning moment than a short. Click this text to continue. When making headway, you get a long turning lever, and consequently you get a greater turning moment. When making sternway, you get a short turning lever, and consequently you have less moment to turn the ship with. As you could see from the animations, the rudder is much more effective when making headway. The same principles apply when you use bow thrusters or tugs. The water flow from the propeller around the rudder creates forces that help you turn the vessel. 
If you do not have a water flow around the rudder, you will have no turning effect. When turning the rudder, the water flowing around it will create a pressure zone on one side and a suction zone on the other. These two zones together will create a force called lift. If you study the animation to the right, you will see that the water flow is faster on one side of the rudder. By employing Bernoulli's law, you will understand how the lift force is created. Ship handling in practice can be said to be a circular movement between observing, estimating, assessing, deciding, and executing. A good advice to all ship handlers is to remember the old saying, full speed is fool speed. The first step on the way to becoming a professional ship handler is observation of the whole situation, estimating and assessing possible actions, deciding what to do, executing the decisions. Relevant and up-to-date information is essential for the ship handler. Such information can be obtained by visual observation, instrument observation, studying the ship's maneuvering characteristics, Estimating the external forces correctly. Obtaining detailed local knowledge. Communicating with relevant information sources, i.e. other ships, vessel traffic services, etc. It's not possible and relevant to calculate all the forces and their influence on a particular manoeuvre. However, in order to undertake a correct estimate of what to do in a particular manoeuvre situation, as many of these forces as possible should be known and taken into account. A ship's ability to manoeuvre depends on the ship's steering ability, the ship's turning ability, the ship's stopping ability, it's important that the ship handler is aware that the majority of the ships in service today are operated without any proven documentation of the ship's manoeuvring performance standards. The professional ship handler should familiarise themselves with the advantages and limitations of available equipment in order to optimise its use whenever needed. Another important qualification necessary for the professional ship handler is an ability to think and plan ahead of the ship, thus being at all times prepared for the next move.